Happy Tuesday, friends. Hope you're having a great Holy Week. I hope that there has been time that you've been able to pause, to reflect, to remember, and to draw closer to Jesus this week and to the Lord for all that has happened and all that we are celebrating and remember on this of the holiest of weeks. Well, it is Tuesday, and according to the commentary that I'm using, today is the day of parables. So if you, we're not going to cover a specific verse. We're going to talk about three or four chapters, and I would encourage you to go to Matthew chapter 21, <clears throat> starting in verses 23, the whole way through almost the end of Matthew 24, verse 51. So we're going to cover, if you will, 21, 22, 23, and 24 today. So I'm going to give a really big overview in hopes that you will take time to go ahead, read these, uh, read what Jesus is doing, where he's at, what he is planning, and then be able to take time and reflect on it. So Matthew 21 today, as you turn there, a question for you, or just, I guess it's more of a statement, not a question. Uh, oftentimes, we find that it's easier to do things ourselves than it is to teach someone else to do what we're trying to do. I can take 10 minutes and do something, or I can take 30 minutes, explain it, demonstrate it, and then have someone else do it. Now, in this rushed society, we'd rather do it ourselves because we can get in and get out quicker and get it done quicker, and it's done the way we want it to get done. But then the question comes and we ask ourselves, who are we teaching? Who are we helping to learn the skills that we know? So today, as you read, to today is Tuesday, Jesus is taking the time to teach the disciples. He has them on the Mount of Olives, they're outside of Jerusalem, and he's taking time to teach them. He wants them to learn from him before he leaves them on Friday through crucifixion. Now, miss that. Three days before he's crucified, Jesus is taking time to teach his disciples, to, he, to equip his disciples so they can continue to learn and grow from the teachings of Christ. So Jesus is speaking in parables in Matthew 21 through 24. Now, a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. It's a story about an object on earth or a, it's an object lesson, but it has a heavenly or godly meaning. Now, Jesus, what he was teaching against or whom he was teaching against were the religious leaders. The religious leaders of Jesus' day, they were supposed to be helping people grow closer in their relationship with the Lord. They were supposed to help and encourage people to read God's word, to help them with their sacrifices, to help them in their lives so they can continue to approach a holy God. However, the religious leaders, they were not interested in that. The religious leaders were interested in legalism, that people would follow the religious leaders or the Pharisees, and they wouldn't necessarily follow God. The Pharisees were not interested in teaching the right truths about God and what he said in his word. They're only interested in helping people follow themselves. Now, Jesus is sitting on the Mount of Olives, and I would encourage you to Google, or if you want a map, I have a map available of understanding where the Mount of Olives is in relation to Jerusalem. So the Mount of Olives, if you will, is on your right, and Jerusalem is on your left. If you have a piece of paper, try to talk your way through it. The Mount of Olives would be up at the right-hand corner, and Jerusalem is in the middle to the middle upper part of the paper. And the 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 disciples and Jesus, they're overlooking Jerusalem. And in my mind's eye, Jesus is standing there and disciples are sitting and they're looking over Jesus and they're seeing Jerusalem. They're seeing Herod's beautiful temple and Jesus is using Jerusalem and he's saying to them, hey, you don't realize that the temple is going to be destroyed. Everything that you see here is going to be uh, taken away. And this was a prophecy Jesus was giving that it was going to occur in 70 AD. Jerusalem would be overtaken. People would be taken into captivity as well as many would lose their lives in captivity. So Jesus is taking time to prepare his disciples, not just for the next three days of his crucifixion and resurrection, but he's also helping to equip the disciples for prepare for the next 30 years. It's going to get a whole lot worse before it gets better. But Jesus is also taking time to discuss the future of the world. 
the disciples, they still, three days before Jesus' crucifixion, and they still can't quite grasp all that Jesus is telling them. They think that Jesus is going to come and overtake the world by military, that he's going to bring this great, uh, if you will, coup. But they don't understand that Jesus is going to die on Friday, that he is going to be the perfect sacrifice for the sins of the world. They don't get that. And I sat here and I thought about that, that the disciples, they're learning from the greatest teacher ever, from Jesus, the Son of God himself, and they still miss it. They hear from Jesus, and yet they still miss what Jesus is trying to teach them. And how often does that happen to me? How often does that happen to you that we read our Bible, we read God's word, and we miss it? And we have to go back a second time or a third time or a fourth time. And we, we begin to grow in our understanding. We begin to grow in our knowledge. But it takes hard work. So I just read through that and just see the disciples. It, it just boom, goes right over their head. I hope that that's not true with you. I hope that you're taking time to read God's word, to think over it, to meditate on it, to ask questions about it so you can continue to grow in your knowledge and your love of Christ. So let's go ahead and apply Tuesday of Holy Week. The question I have for you, the question I came out of these three or four chapters was, who are you helping to take time? I'm sorry, let's try it again. Who are you taking time to help grow in their knowledge? Who are you helping to equip? Who are you helping to teach? Who are you helping to grow in their knowledge of Jesus? Hey, I agree with you and you agree with me. It is so much easier and quicker just to do the task or to do the, the object yourself. To do the task yourself, get in, get out, and move on. But then you're not helping others grow and learn. And if you know and you're teaching someone else, I can almost guarantee that they're not going to learn as fast as you want them to learn. But they are learning. So what can you do to help someone this week grow in their knowledge so they can continue to develop in their understanding. Who can you help this week? This week of all weeks, it's a, it's a great week to start a discussion with someone as we are in Holy Week. People are at a heightened awareness to know what's going on. What is all this about? So here we are on Tuesday. Wednesday's coming. Thursday is the Last Supper. Friday is Good Friday, the crucifixion of Christ. And then we have Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday, Victory Sunday, the Sunday we celebrate the empty tomb. We only have about three, four, five days left, depending on which event you want to look at. And Holy Week is over. Let's not lose an opportunity to help people grow in their knowledge of Jesus. If I can help you in any way, trust you'll reach out. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great Tuesday. I'll see you tomorrow morning.